Hey, and just a quick reminder that the audio-only versions of these Vital MX interviews are available on the Vital MX podcast page. Search for it anywhere you get your pods and let your friends know about it. What's up, Matt? How's it going, y'all? Appreciate you having me on and uh, stoked to be presented by Race Tech. I, uh, I love my Race Tech, so I'm glad they're presenting me. I actually was with Checkers whenever uh, I think he he ran across you at Millville, and I was yeah. like, "Oh hell yeah, that, that's my guy. He's got a YZ250. <laughs> I know who that is." <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't really know your vlog until it was probably after that. I think the Unadilla one was the first one I saw, and I was like, "Oh my god, this thing!" I was cracking up, dude. I was telling TJ at the beginning of the show, like you fist pumping with Chase. You put a lot of work in your vlogs, and you're just a funny guy. Yeah, I appreciate it. And it's it's funny. I actually just do the vlogs on an app on my phone. So like for you, Nadilla, um, while my girlfriend was driving, I was just editing um, on my phone in the passenger seat. And that's usually how I would do it. So it's it's honestly not anything like too extravagant. But growing up, um, like when I lived at a training facility when my bike was broken, like I would film people all the time just okay. for fun. So it's kind of something that I really enjoyed doing. Like there was, I think it was Red Bud. I, I was actually done with my vlog um, Saturday night after the race. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's, I like, I like getting my stuff done fairly quick too. So yeah, this year you made, uh, I think six other outdoor rounds, but you haven't raced outdoors since 2018. And then before that it was 2014. Why the gaps? <laughs> so 2014, I think I did six of them on a 250F that um, it needed more work than it had, but we did what we could with what we had. And that was like straight out of amateurs. That was supposed to be my A-class year. And we kind of just figured, you know, if we we're going to have to spend all this money to race, like let's go race pro, you know, kind of screw it at that point. Um, and then after that, I was supposed to do some supercross and I had a few injuries and was kind of over it for a few years. I actually took like a year or two where I didn't even really ride at all. Mm. Um, went to commu community college for a little bit. And then um, 2018, I was working at South of the Border, um, train helping train kids down there. And um, I did Muddy Creek in 2018 because I was wanting to do um, a two-stroke race that they were having at intermission that day. And the two-stroke that I was supposed to ride, um, the kid blew it up like two weeks before the race. So... I last second was like, screw it. I have my 450 and Muddy Creek's like one of my favorite tracks. So, you know, why not try? So that was where the 2018 one came from. And okay. then I ended up um, going back to school um, at a university um, to do business, um, to do marketing. And then I think, let's see, shortly after the Nationals, I got a Suzuki 450 to get like good contingency money and all that. And sorry to all you Suzuki fans out there, but I really did not enjoy it. Um, it actually made me kind of quit again for a while. because I just wasn't, gel I wasn't gelling with it. You weren't kicking and with it. <laughs> I was not gelling. I, I, yeah, it was not good. So I, I actually quit again for like another year and then I got the two stroke and Ever since I got that, I just have been having more and more fun and yeah. getting more and more comfortable on it. Well, I I was watching your uh, your vlog from the the pro the pro am at Dublin Gap, and I, I feel like you got worked by a guy on a Suzuki. I we all got worked by a guy on a Suzuki. <laughs> he was ripping a kid named uh, Chase Yenser. Um, he he was actually riding for the Bar X team, I think, for the last three or four outdoors. I think he just came out of amateurs. Okay. Um. So obviously, like he rips anyway, but yeah. his family actually owns that track too. So I think we were going to have a tough time with him, regardless, no matter what he was on. I mean, it shows because he put it to us on the Suzuki. But I think he's got a pretty good Suzuki. It seemed pretty stout, yeah, but he's, yeah. he's a good rider anyway, regardless. <laughs> yeah, I was just busting your balls a little bit, but <laughs> I, I like the way your program is, though, man. Like you're you're throwing your bikes into you know whether it be your old beater truck or your girlfriend's dad's truck, whatever it takes, and you, you know your girlfriend's riding with you or, or her dad's going with you. It's it's a very very old school privateer program and it seems like you're just having a good time and making making motos <laughs> yeah but that's honestly the only way we really know how to do it at this point and even you know a couple years ago two and a half years ago or so i was kind of over it again with racing because i was just going everywhere by myself you know doing everything solo and 
um, you know, even just hitting, you know, the races around, you know, the neighboring states, just doing everything alone was kind of getting old. Yeah. Um, and whenever, whenever she started coming to the races with me and then her dad also being like the ultimate hype man, like <laughs> it kind of, it kind of kickstarted like what you guys are seeing today, because I really don't think that, um, I was ever this fast, even growing up. Like, I really think I'm at my best right now. Like I still have some things I need to iron out because obviously my results were, not good but i really think like as far as like raw speed and like how i feel on the bike i really don't think i've ever felt better oh that's great that's really cool to hear that that that's progressed like that and tj i don't know if you've seen any of his vlogs yet but i haven't his girlfriend's dad goes with him as a mechanic and it's like he's like a super fan too so he's like he sees like ken rocks and whatever go by he's like oh oh that's like he's not paying attention to matt he's paying attention (laughs) to the other guys but then when (laughs) when matt's riding he's like screaming his head off for matt you know most mechanics are kind of being quiet and he's like super fanning out it's it's really it's such a fun vlog to watch yeah so i'm i'm surprised he didn't get kicked out to be honest with you like as i was reviewing the footage on the way home from bud's creek i was like dude i don't know if they're gonna let you back at iron man and then (laughs) iron man i come off the first practice and he's like oh dude you're gonna love where i was filming from and i'm like oh god where were you he goes oh i got escorted off don't you worry and he was like in the infield with team managers just like hanging out filming just having a good time that's great that's awesome did you run the whole season on the two stroke yeah, so I did uh I did high point through um what was the last one? High point through Iron Man. Yeah. But I skipped I skipped Southwick because I figured if I went there I was gonna blow up my bike. Yeah. And so instead, <laughs> you guys are gonna love this. Instead I went to a, a money race in Ohio and blew my bike up there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you hey. yeah, and and, this- and, and is that farther from you in Ohio or like where are you? Um, out no, of? it was a bit closer. Oh, okay. it, it's close to where my family's at, so I was able to see them too. But it was actually really I should have vlogged that one too because uh, a buddy of mine that lives in the same town as me that also rides a YZ two fifty. Yeah. Um. He and I he and I went up there together and second lap of practice. I don't know what happened to him, but he like endoed and got knocked out, and <laughs> it was just this whole gnarly ordeal. Like me having to go to and from the hospital the whole night Saturday after racing, and then Sunday I blow my bike up, and <laughs> wow. and then the the craziest part of all, like it was almost an even bigger disaster because my buddy we took his truck. And the next time he drove it, the truck seized up on him. <laughs> Dude, you have no luck. The, the most recent <laughs> vlog of the Pro Am TJ. Yeah, he he takes his girlfriend's dad's truck right to go to this money race. Right, it's, it ends up being a mutter. He crashes like five times. It seems like yeah, he doesn't make any money. His girlfriend shuts the door of her dad's truck and it blows the rear window out. Like are part of it, so it's what? Like, he's having no luck, dude. I, it's almost like a comedy. Like this is a, if they wrote a comedy about a like a, a dirt bike rider, this is Matt Burkeen. So so Matt hey. Burkeen needs to like start a like a a uh, scripted reality show of how 2022 went. It doesn't have to be scripted. Just go watch this vlog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to script it. That's why me and my girlfriend have been saying like, I damn near just need to like vlog life at this point. Yeah. <laughs> You feel like the two-stroke, obviously, it revitalized you, gets people behind you and stoked about it. But do you feel like your results could have been better on a like a 450, or do you think you'd have just been lost in the pack kind of? You, you get what I'm asking? Yeah, definitely. So it's interesting you ask that because I – um Right after the season was over, I actually got uh, used Yamaha 450 just to race at like money races in the right. fall. Because in the fall, there's a lot of like big money purse races right. um, throughout like the East Coast. So I kind of just got that for that just to kind of like see what I could do on it. And it's a lot better for the start is like my main thing because yeah. that's where I struggle yeah. racing the two stroke everywhere. Right. Um, but but right now, and I, I don't have a ton of time on the 450 just yet, but I feel like I'm really, really similar speed. But it's a lot easier on the 450. That's right. for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, but the I lower agree. heart rate, I think, is made up for an arm pump because this sucker <laughs> is fast. Right. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, um, you know, I I like riding this 450 too, but I like the two stroke a lot better, and the people like it a whole lot better. And if I were to do it on the 450, you know, I, I you know, maybe let's even just say I'm like a 20th place guy, and like that, yeah. and the 450 field. This year, like, you know, there was really, really good guys that are like 20th place. Right. And even, even if I were to do that, like nobody would really care. Where like, 
high, high point, for example, my first moto of the season, I think I got like 37th or something. Like it was awful. Like I was actually like embarrassed and it was insane how many people came through my pit, just like loving it that I was even out there. And like, you know, I, I would have, had I been out there for 30 plus two, just grinding my balls off for a 20th, like nobody would even like have known. Being that we're a race tech sponsored show and you're a race tech rider. Have you talked to them about building like a uh, two fifty two stroke that could maybe have more bottom to get you on a better start, like building the motor, actually building a, a motor and a full program like that. Or, or are you running a pretty close to stock bike? So as of now, it, it's actually pretty close to stock. I would, I actually, now that you mentioned that, I would love to talk to them about it, but, um, I was actually thinking about it today. I think all in, um, the bike has like $600 in it, um, yeah. as like a, a $300 head awesome. cylinder job, an FMF pipe and some V force reads and that's it. And then the race tech suspension, um, Ooh. then they, they took great care of me on that, right. but um, as far as like the motor and, and all that, it's just about a $600 um, yeah, just invest put it, from that's stock. Next year, just a giant race tech logo on the radiator shrouds, yeah. have the race tech motor, race tech suspension, put it in the top. 20. I'm into it. I'd I'll like put a get, flag on. I don't care. <laughs> I'd like to get my hands on that exhaust. Cause I can't get one. They're out. Everybody's yeah. out of the, everybody. Yeah. I need one too, because mine is absolutely torched between like, <laughs> you know, everything i've done this year and yeah. then like even especially after unadilla it was pretty bad as, as many hours as he has on the bike probably needs a gnarly pipe right, to hold up right who's helping you out because the way you're doing this has to be very expensive what kind of support do you have um so my main sponsor um it's kind of unique how it came about um i was at a race at south of the border i'm not sure if you've seen this on my youtube or not but um nick romano was actually there and i I don't know. I still to this day don't know how I did this, but it, I guess it was just a track I was comfortable in a day I was comfortable, but I kind of ran with Romano for a couple motos, but I had like tons of bike problems throughout the day. And I was telling a friend of mine on the gate for a 25 plus moto that just like everything that had gone wrong that day. And the dude that was next to him, like heard everything that I had said. And he owns a car dealership that sells and details transports, um, like Lambos, McLarens, um, Porsches, like all that. So, um, he contacted me and he was like my title sponsor for the year. So he helped me out a ton. And then, um, another there from Pennsylvania, but an insulation company was also super, super helpful, helped me out with, uh, gas and some entry fees as well. And then other than that, it was just, um, a lot of smaller, um, companies and local support that, um, that really helped me out. Um, you know, even people that, that didn't have a lot to give, you know, yeah. we're still, we're still trying to help, which was really, really cool. I mean, a, a little bit from a lot of people makes a lot. So, um, I don't like to be like one of those like handout type of people, but I mean, after the first round, people were dying to help. So, I mean, I kind of had to let them. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I, I like the story of the guy that hears your struggles and decides he's going to help you out while, you know, on the line or whatever. That's, that's really cool that how our industry can it, work. It's, it's crazy how it happened too. And like, he's a religious guy and he's like, man, I, I prayed on it and like something just told me that you really need help. And I said, man, you were right. Cause I do really need help. Like I was about ready to pack it up. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Like how does your program work with that? And where are you training? So that that's definitely like one of the harder struggles, but for me, it's been probably about eight years since I've really been doing riding during the week. So I, it didn't really phase me much. Um, I, was hoping to do like a bit of a boot camp of sorts before the season, but then I jacked my shoulder up pretty bad, like a month before high point. So I barely even made it to the first round. But, um, to be honest with you guys between high point and, um, Ironman, I practiced four times and, um, they were all between Washougal and Unadilla. I managed to link up with, uh, some of the club MX guys like March Banks and Mikel Rath, um, the Martin brothers, Justin Rod Bell, um, Freddie Noir and a bunch of those guys and just pretty much got my teeth kicked in for a couple of weeks, but <laughs> it was really good for me. But other than that, like I basically was just going to the gym every day, doing whatever I could off the bike. But as far as on the bike, it, it really wasn't much. And it was mainly cause I only had this one race bike to ride. Um, I have another bike, but it's been a skeleton back here in my bike room for about three or four months. Cause I keep having to steal parts off of it for this bike. So 
Full um, privacy. Here. Yeah, no practice was not really in the program. Your girlfriend Brianna, I've mentioned her a couple times. She rides too. And but you you said earlier like your girlfriend started going with you and it, you sort of got reinvigorated and found the love for the sport again. Was that a new relationship or she just started going to the races with you after being together for a while? No, no, that was a new relationship. Okay. And like right when, right whenever we got together, it was like the first time I had rode in months. And um, she her, she was staying with her dad at the time and he lives close to a track that I'm actually going to go race at this weekend, um, Lake Sugar Tree. And we, me, her and her dad went out and raced and um, I actually, my pipe had gotten like so dented in that like it was like coming off of like the intake. So I actually borrowed her dad's pipe for the first race that they came to me with. Um, but man, like ever since then, like we just, we had so much fun and that I never really had people around me like that to like pump me up like they did. Like they're That's like great. the ultimate, you know, hype man and hype woman for me. And it, it's crazy like how much the mental game really does help. And I know, uh, Dark side. I know you've heard Kiefer say this, but uh, home life. life is actually the real deal. I discovered Matt. Before we let you go, uh, what are the chances of you hitting some Supercross? Is that something that you could see happening? Um, the chances of me hitting Supercross are zero okay. percent. I hate to let anyone down, but <laughs> okay. I am not into Supercross at all. I, I tried to do a couple of go arounds at Supercross, and it absolutely bit me both times. And as supportive as Brianna is, I also think she would probably cut me if I tried to race Supercross. Oh, so wow. I don't think she's into it either. She's not into it. Well, I guess you're up. But neither I'm, am I. That's the yeah. main thing. I'm not into well, hey. it. I do I do think I'm going to be trying to do some arena cross this winter. I don't know like what series or if I'm just going to do it around my local stuff or what sure. I'm going to do. But I'd like to try to do some arena cross this winter. Well, That's going to be a stack. Like arena cross is going to – I've heard so many of the privateers hitting arena cross yeah. this year. Well, they're all, but there's also some of those guys are going on the World Supercross. And, yeah, well, this Arena Cross hey, is going to be. Amazing. But here's the thing: there's a lot of guys that are going Supercross only. Matt's a motocross only. Motocross those, only. Yeah, I guess so. Just, just like the Dunge. Yeah, just exactly. like the Dunge. Yeah, I, I mean it. he he did cross the finish line with Chase. I mean he's had yeah. a great year. Yeah, that was. I, I don't know why Chase was so excited when. Yeah, I guess he was excited <laughs> hey, for Matt. Funny, funny story about the Dunge, real quick before okay. y'all let me. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, I lined up next to him at Washougal, or actually, I, I take that back. He lined up next to me because he had a, a DNF, so he was like last gate pick, and he right. lined up next to me. And uh, am I allowed to swear or no? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so I looked at Dungey, he pulls in, and I was like, Dunge, you're a f***ing legend, man. And he looks at me, he goes, yeah, he was like, ah, I don't know about that. That might be you on that two-stroke. And I was just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> are you kidding me you, you needed a go yeah too bad they, they don't allow gopros anymore because you could have had that on you know for life yeah i know and that that was one of the few races that um brianna wasn't taking me to the gate because oh. i actually had a mechanic to help me out yeah. because of the malfunction i had at millville so had she been with me she would have got that dude think about tj every story he's told us all the bad stuff like it's not really bad but oh i didn't have the gopro at the right time oh my pipes dented all oh, the window blew out like Matt's just living like he's having a great life. It sounds like, but lots, just, just little it, slivers just of little. stuff that just like why just let them go my way, dude. Yeah, Come exactly, on. exactly. Man, hey, I feel I feel you guys on that one. But <laughs> I, I I always try to think if I just keep on doing what I'm doing, it'll, it'll turn around at no, some point. It can't be bad luck forever. You got for one more for the people that are listening, your YouTube channel is just your name. Yeah. yeah, so if you just search Matt Burkeen, um, okay. I should be, or my channel should be the first thing that comes up. Yeah, it out. is. I, I looked it up. I just want to make sure that was your channel. B U R K E E N. Yep. Matt Burkeen. Yep. Yes, sir. I appreciate you sharing them for me, Dark Side. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've become a fan, man. I, I really, just your vlogs and your attitude. And I, I like the, I like the behind the scenes stuff. So, like, I'll watch you ride on your vlogs, but I like, I love all the behind the scenes stuff of vlogs. So, I like seeing you and your, your girlfriend's dad and your dad and your your girl. And he's just that. checking your girl out. What yeah, he's saying. that is part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely we definitely try to keep it real. And, and this weekend we should have an interesting one because um, my girlfriend's actually not going to be able to attend either of these because she's got to work and then she's got something else going on. But I think I'm going back to Pennsylvania on Saturday by myself for a two stroke race and then okay. heading back here heading back here to race on Sunday in Virginia. So that's I don't even know what, I don't even know what vehicle I'm taking or whose back window I'm going to bust out, <laughs> right. this weekend, but it ought to be we'll entertaining. Figure it out I look forward to seeing the video about it. All well, right, cool. Matt it was great talking to you, getting a chance to get to know you a little bit and uh, we'll get you on again soon. 
Right on. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it was fun coming on shooting the shit with you guys. Hopefully we can do it again. Absolutely, man. Yes, Thanks, sir. man. Yeah, no problem. You guys have a good one. You too. Yeah. Bye.